Good day, everyone, and welcome to episode 13 of the HJC podcast, powered by HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. I'm Ryan, your Saturday writer, and today on the show, we're going to be talking about holiday gifts that we got this year, that we've gotten past years, that we've given to other people, all sorts of things. And of course, we'll touch on the uh, outdoor game from the World Junior Championships, Canada versus USA. We have all our regular features, the mailbag, Faker Authentic, Throwback Throwdown, and we'll go around the league, which of course is everybody's favorite portion of the show. But uh, the guests here today, it's another uh, Southern Fried Boner Sandwich. We got Sean, Monday's writer. How's it going, Sean? Doing great. Glad to be back from Florida. Got a little sun. Managed to wear a couple jerseys in Florida. Absolutely. And our Friday writer, TC. How's it going, man? Uh, it's going well. I'm not going to be homeless, so that's always a good start to the week. That's a very good thing. Very good thing. All right. Well, everyone's here. We've done a rundown on the topics, so let's get started. And our first topic, we're talking about holiday gifts, Christmas gifts. Uh, we all celebrate Christmas here, so Christmas gifts, uh, past and present. And I'll start us off. This year, I got the Toronto Maple Leafs home Reebok jersey. I decided that if Adidas isn't going to make jerseys for fat guys, screw you, Adidas. I'm going to buy the old Reeboks, which were on clearance at Pro Hockey Life for 65 bucks or 70 bucks. So that's what my wife got me. Uh, Sean, you get anything cool this Christmas for hockey logo related? Uh, yeah, I got a from a very good friend of mine who submitted a question to the show, a Yarmir Yager goal puck from when he was with the Rangers from the 2003-2004 season in a game against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Along with that, a hip-hop magazine from 1997 that features a reference to Yager in it, I kid you not, in a hip-hop magazine. Finally, I went and bought myself the new Rangers uh, Winter Classic jersey because why not? That's a good buy. And Adidas, right? Adidas 2XL. I want to see how they do with 2XL. Yeah, size 56. Uh, TC, anything cool you get this year? Uh, yeah, I got one of those CCM old-time hockey sweatshirts. It's a Rangers one. Uh, cream, which looks actually really good. It's almost like the Winter Classic jerseys from 2012 because it's almost got that antique white. Uh, it's got the main crest on the front and actual mesh striping on it looks great and then my parents also got me an ice scraper made from an old recycled stick yeah which you, is pretty cool yeah you shared a picture with that on the chat that that's awesome that's very cool um i remember th- actually this year i got my son involved my five-year-old son involved in hockey jerseys so i got him a f- fanatics makes the kids jerseys so he got a he got a home leafs jersey this year and then uh, he tells me that he wants all the other 30 jerseys in the league, too. So it uh, looks like it's going to be costing me a bit of money for the next few years. Sean, did you uh, give anything cool this year or maybe in past years? Sent out a few jerseys this year. Sent uh, my two jersey collecting friends. One of them got a Bruins uh, Reebok alternate, the first one, the Hemstripless jersey that TC isn't a big fan of, as well as the Kootenai script alternate. That I've been hanging on to for a while. I gave that to a friend in this year, and uh, the other one got a TCCM Classic, the one that was released on NHL Shop with the 2014 uh, Stadium Series game, the vintage jersey. TC, you give anything cool this year or some other years to to people? Uh, well, it's extremely rare because I'm from the South and I <laughs> may be the only person in the tri-state area who actually cares about hockey. But uh, a couple of years ago, back when they were still a thing, I got my friends, one of my friends, a uh, Thrasher's beanie, or as you Canadians call it, a took. Took. <laughs> and took. It, it was it was a really good looking uh, beanie. It had like the palm on top. It was burgundy with like yellow and blue in the cuff around it, and the big old Thrasher logo right up front. And on the topic of toques, I went out on Boxing Day and bought myself a, the Toronto Arena's toque with the big pom pom on the top and the blue one with the white stripes. Thirty percent off, so. It still cost me $25, but it's a very warm toque, and I wear it out in the snow when I go walk the dog. <laughs> yeah, so the store toque, 30% off? 
Duke, thirty percent off at the Pro Hockey Life. Just pop in there, tell them Ryan sent you, get you the thirty percent <laughs> off. Um, on the topic of gifts that we got in past years, last year the big gift for me from my wife. She knows my obsession with hockey jerseys, but I got the LA Kings Burger King jersey, which is one of my probably my favorite jersey in my entire collection. Uh, that's what I got last year, and also in the writers chat that we just have with amongst ourselves. We brought up the topic of the first jersey we ever got, and it was, for me, uh, Christmas 88. My mom got me a white Wayne Gretzky LA Kings jersey. The numbering on the back was just heat press, black basic numbers. So as a five-year-old, I didn't know the difference. Until later that evening, my grandparents gave me the black LA Kings jersey with the proper numbering, and then I realized that there's different ways that you can get a jersey numbered. And thus began my obsession with uh, with hockey jerseys. Uh, Sean, you remember the first hockey jersey you ever got? Yep, for my eighth birth or eighth or ninth birthday, I was starting hockey. The only year I ever played hockey, uh, and I was given a two thousand and three oh four Leafs away uh, with the TML patch on it, which is why I'm so attached to that patch. And I had that jersey for years. Uh, eventually gave it to my little cousin but uh yeah that was the first jersey i had and that was the only jersey i had until i was about 10 and i got a matthias olin canucks jersey tc you remember still have cool you remember the tc you remember the first jersey you got i do um the first jersey i got was for christmas in 2009 i believe i got the thrashers original white jersey with the wing on the underarms it's a beauty i loved it i was a huge fan of underarm pattern i thought it fit great with the thrasher identity and i was sad to see it go when they moved to the edge system i wonder if there's a market for vintage thrashers jerseys like obviously we know that people in atlanta and not enough people in atlanta went to the games but i wonder if ccm would ever pull out the Thrashers in the in the vintage jersey program. Sean, you see you, you see that happening? Do you think that's coming? I have five of the six jerseys the Thrashers ever wore, so there's clearly a market. I know people who want Thrashers jerseys. Which one it would be? If it had to be one, it'd be the original baby blue alternate. That would be the one jersey I think. If, if Mitchell and Ness took the time to make like a Kovalchuk jersey with the fifth anniversary patch, the Dan Snyder memorial patch, make like one of those $400 jerseys that you look and you think I could reasonably pay $400 for this. Cause it's that nice. And it'd be the only Jersey I get this year. I'd want that. TC, would you want, were you a thrashers fan? Would you want thrashers gear in, in your collection? Uh, I was a thrashers fan to this day. I still believe in blue land. Uh, the thrashers will rise again. Damn right. <laughs> um, but I, I do think I would like more Thrashers jerseys in my collection. And what I really want, because I have a dark sense of humor, is a Danny Heatley jersey with the Snyder patch on it. <laughs> um, I think that would really make the collection. And for those in the know, they, they would find it either hysterical or deeply disturbing. A <laughs> little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. That's what Mitchell and Ness should do. Danny Heatley, Thrasher's jersey, Dan Snyder memorial patch. Comes with a free BMW keychain. Meanwhile, uh, Fanatics will release a Dan Snyder, Dan Snyder memorial jersey, of course, (laughs) because they are Fanatics. (laughs) (laughs) All right. um, Anything else you want to add here? Uh, Nothing's coming to the top of my head. uh, Oh, I do have one story. Uh, I think it was about 10 years old. Felix Potvin. Toronto Maple Leafs goalie, my favorite player. I got a blue Leafs jersey with his number on the back. It was all properly done. And I remember uh, going to my aunt's house, and she was making her own stickers. It was really stupid, but she had some dyes left out on the table. I didn't pay pay attention, and I put my arm right in the dyes, and those dyes were not washable. So for uh, two or three years while that jersey fit me, it had a big color stain right on the sleeve. And I ruined that jersey first day I got it. You guys have any uh, anything else you want to add to this segment? Sure, I got a story. Uh, when I was 17, uh, my mom got me what was going to be a James Van Rienstijk uh, Winter Classic jersey. Uh, and we got it. And she bought it off Amazon. And she thought it was real. And it wasn't. 
and I had to explain to my poor mother, who worked so hard to get this this jersey that I really wanted, that no, this was a fake. So we sent it back to Amazon, and they actually took it back, and I got a Bobrovsky uh, Blue Jackets alternate instead. Bobrovsky. That was the year. Uh, it was the year or the year after the Bobrovsky thing got really popular. So that was. Uh, it worked out in the end, but I still have never replaced uh, the that Winter Classic jersey. I think I'd love to get a Bobrovsky Flyers jersey and then go to a Flyers game just to remind fans who they traded away. That w- <laughs> just to go to Philadelphia to see a Leafs game is on my bucket list, but I think I would also like to wear a Bobrovsky jersey. TC, you got anything else you want to add to this segment? Uh, Yeah, it wasn't for Christmas, but a couple of years ago when we were cleaning out my grandmother's house uh, to get ready to sell it, my uncle gave me something he found in the basement. It was an original of of the Wayne Gretzky 99 overtime hockey slot hockey. And it was, it was perfect because it was the Rangers, which are my favorite team and the Kings, which was perfect because I was born in Los Angeles. So it was just sort of a weird, the two random teams that he got with it initially were perfect for me. And I just saw that as a sign that it was meant to be mine. I still want, it's not Wayne Gretzky tabletop hockey, but it's uh, the tabletop hockey done by Stiga. And I want that. You can change the teams on it and all that kind of stuff. But I, it, it's not fair playing my five-year-old son every day on it. So maybe I'll let him grow up first. Uh, uh, you can change the players on the Wayne Gretzky one too. Oh, I still, cool. It still has the original order form, which <laughs> I'm sure is completely impossible now. But for, I think it was like an extra $4 per set, you could get different teams. I actually, on eBay a couple years ago, found uh, someone had custom painted over ones for the Thrashers. And I was Ooh. really, really tempted to get that. But they were charging an exorbitant amount. Speaking of tabletop hockey, one of the biggest collector's items on eBay and just generally, and I only know this because I'm a a big old wrestling fan, was tabletop hockey with WWF wrestlers. You could have like Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior and you'd have tabletop hockey and they would be playing against each other. It uh, It was pretty cool. But anyways, that's another topic for another day. We'll come. We'll be coming right back and we'll be talking about the outdoor game that happened on Friday between Team Canada and Team USA. The HJC Podcast, every Saturday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, on HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. This past Friday, the Team USA took on Team Canada, won in a shootout 4-3 at New Era Field in Buffalo for an outdoor game. And we'll start with the Buffalo Bills-inspired Team USA jerseys. Uh, I was not a fan of these. There's a way to do a crossover jersey and do other sports, which I think uh, the Springfield Thunderbirds did well with their Boston Red Sox uniforms in the AHL this year. These, I just thought, looked goofy, and it almost looked like they were just pandering to the Bills. Like, hey, thanks for letting us use your stadium. Sean, did you did you see the jerseys, and what did you think of them? They looked all right. As a USA jersey, it'd be, you know, nice. But... Uh... I don't know why they felt the need to reference like the most lovable loser team in professional sports. Uh, you know, I get you're playing on their field, but if you were if they played an outdoor game in San Diego, I highly doubt they would feel the need to put Padres jerseys on. TZ, what did you think of the Bills inspired jerseys? I gotta agree with you. I feel like yeah, cool. They were trying to pay tribute to the team but it's just pandering to them for letting them use their stadium uh it wasn't a really good look i really hate the fact that they had the numbers on the front that's super obnoxious and basically destroys the whole point of a hockey jersey uh the socks looked atrocious i hated the white that was the predominant color even though they were wearing all blue and the white helmet as well i understand you're trying to emulate the bills but like sean said do you really to take the most mediocre team in the nfl consistently just lovable losers is an overstatement for them like 
four years in a row you go to the Super Bowl and don't win, that's just that's time to shut down the organization. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just thought that they could have worn uh, plain blue jerseys and just pulled Bill's jerseys on over top. That's kind of what it looked like. There was nothing hockey about them I found. And and it was just I, I thought they looked I thought they looked silly. And the socks looked silly too. Um there was a way to do it, but that wasn't it. And I don't know what the way to do it was. I I don't know what they should have worn. Is it as simple as them wearing the nineteen eighty Miracle on Ice jerseys, T C? Yes. Th- yes. That's no. all they should do. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, ninety six yes. World Cup. Oh uh, no. I, uh, you have other designs you can throw back to, I think. It, it, but, like, here's my problem with the, the Miracle on Ice jerseys. When, like, every AHL team started doing it, that's when you got to think, you know, there must be other moments in USA hockey where you can think, okay, we can throw back to this. We don't always have to go to that one time we beat the Soviets. But, but it makes more sense because this was a game being played in upstate New York. Well, that's fair. You know, that, that's, that's a fair point. I'll give you that, but... Uh, if, if you wanted to not fall into the same category as every minor league team, it'd be the equivalent, I think, of the USA team doing like something similar to a Star Wars night. Like everybody does it at this point. It's not particularly original, uh, and uh, you know, I, I think that they could do something a little more original. But I get what TC means about the uh, upstate New York. My personal opinion: the '98 to '04 jerseys would be beautiful to see again. So what the Bills inspired jersey, Sean? What if you had to give it a rating out of ten? What would you give it? Six out of ten. It's not bad. It's just not good. And uh, the Bills are mediocre. TC, what'd you rate it? Four. I hate it. Yeah. Like I, I, I give it the points that I give it because they did a good job of trying to match the Bills uniform. They actually, it, it looks a lot like the Bills actual uniforms. But I just think the whole idea behind it was kind of a miscue. Yeah, I'd give it a three and a half. I, it just it wasn't enjoyable. It didn't look good. I I can't think of one thing about it that I that I really liked. Uh, it it wasn't terrible. Like it wasn't a, a brown splotchy shit covered jersey. But it, it it doesn't deserve anything over a, a three and a half for me. Now on the other side of the ring, Canada just wore their regular white jerseys and I'm I'm looking at this saying how could they not capitalize on this situation I mean they had 40,000 plus fans but I think if you offer the fans something else there would have been a few thousand more there if if maybe Canada was wearing some sort of cool jersey a 72 throwback which they can't do because uh, it's owned by the actual 72 team, not Hockey Canada, but they could do a, a Canada Cup 76 throwback or something like that. Selfish. <laughs> Sean. 74, 74 Summit Series, the WHA Series where the Soviet spanked us and we don't talk about it. <laughs> no, I agree with you. I mean, I get why they did it, but if you were at the outdoor game in um, Detroit or Hamilton where the Marlies wore their usual jerseys and it was just a buzzkill. Yes, now apparently for that game, if anybody doesn't know, in 2012, Hamilton played Toronto in an AHL outdoor game. I was there, but apparently Toronto had something planned, but they somehow clashed with what Hamilton was wearing. So yeah, the Toronto Marlies wore their regular blue jerseys for that game. But go ahead, Sean. Yeah, I think that that's a buzzkill for you know fans in the stands. It's like you got a team and they wear something new they're probably never going to wear again and what does your team wear their same old red jerseys so uh, even if they just wore their well they can't wear their olympic jerseys but something you know just something new or something old from canada for this game to match like it doesn't have to be football related but just something something different and it it would have been something different in stores too because right now the stores are flooded with team canada olympic jerseys and this would have been Something else to throw in there, you know? Disgusting. <laughs> we've And we've covered that. TC, what did you think about Canada wearing their standard white jerseys? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say I don't mind it. Like, yeah, granted, they could have capitalized on this being an outdoor game. And I don't, I, I don't disagree with Sean that I would have liked to have seen that throws back to, like, the history of Canadian hockey. But 
to be honest, it's much better than what the USA wore. It's much better than what Canada is going to be wearing in the Olympics. So I think it's nice to get another look at this beautiful uniform before we have to look at the garbage template jersey in a couple of months. Another thing I noticed at the game was just that the stadium wasn't overly done up like you'll see at a Winter Classic or Stadium Series. And I thought it made it look rather minor league and not as important. I don't know if you got the same feeling, Sean, from seeing either if you watched the game or if you saw some highlights of it. But what did you think of the overall appearance of New Era Field? I did watch a bit of the game, and it just looked like a Bills game where they stuck a uh, stuck a hockey a hockey rink in the middle of the field. No, I you know the the World Juniors competes with the Spangler Cup for airtime, and you want to make the World Juniors in Canada, especially, to be the number one tournament you want people to turn into. You know, Canada went on a five a five year gold win streak when I was a kid, and that really drew people in. But they haven't really had that same sort of success. Uh, and the U.S. apparently has been dealing with attendance problems at this tournament. The the Buffalo hasn't drawn the crowds that they were hoping. And I heard that at the broadcast at some point. So they need to knock this out of the park. And then, you know, this seems, you know, ham-fisted, half put together. I've seen uh, photos of CHL outdoor games done up more than this. TC, how did how'd the field, how did the stadium look to you? To me, it was just kind of disappointing i want to say because you know for nhl games where they're going to get larger crowds it makes sense to have these outdoor games but with the world juniors like this sure you're going to have the canadians come down but the u.s you're going to be hard pressed to find that many hockey fans so a couple days after christmas go to buffalo to watch a game outside and on top of that it, it you can see in some of the shots you can see people in the stands but in others there are entire sections of the stadium that are completely bare, and it kind of makes it look like a joke. Yeah, I thought by the end zones where they didn't sell any tickets, you could have done cover-ups of some variety. Just throw some throw some logos on there or something, and it just it adds more life to the broadcast, to the game. And uh, also that what something that didn't help attendance problems was the one highway that leads essentially from Toronto and surrounding areas to Buffalo, there was a truck fire, and they actually had to close the highway. So I know of uh, several people that didn't even make it to the game because the, the QEW was closed due to a truck fire. How but, selfish of that truck owner. <laughs> idiot truck drivers. <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing, speaking of logos, it would have been nice for this game to have its own logo and maybe its own name too, the International Classic, the International Outdoor spectacle or something like that i think that would have added to this game sean oh totally the the double ihf just seemed to almost put like nothing i didn't even know this game was happening until i don't know a couple days beforehand it's like oh they're playing outdoors wait what you know i no logo no nothing you know if they i get that this might be the first one that they want to do but the nhl put effort into the first winter classic they put effort into the first stadium series they put effort into the first Heritage Classic, and that was pretty amateur compared to what it is today. So if they can do that, then the international governing body of ice hockey should be able to do something a little better than that. Yeah, I thought this 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 game was on par with the 2003 Heritage Classic. And the Heritage that Heritage Classic actually was a full house, So, and in colder weather. TC, uh, just thoughts on if this game had a logo. I think it would have been a lot better with a logo. I think it would have garnered more interest. It would have seemed like a more legitimate uh, event instead of just, oh, yeah, we're, we're having this game outdoors. Uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, it's, just, it's just a game. It's just a game. Yeah, just a game. That's uh, what it's, it was. It's going to be a little chilly. We'll, we'll call it the a little chilly bowl. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I just I just think it seemed like something they hastily threw together. Like there was no real like Sean said, I, I didn't hear about it until a couple days ahead of time because there was no real big fanfare about it. There was no name, no press. Um 
it was just kind of like something that someone threw out in the office and they were like, yeah, okay. And that person ran with it and then came back to everyone like, Hey, we're doing it today. Crap. You were serious. (laughs) And the ridiculous thing is they've had this planned for over a year. They've known about this for over a year. I mean, they just, all you gotta do is create a logo for the game. Don't even give it a name if you don't want to. But if you had a logo for the game, you throw that on t-shirts, you start selling t-shirts you can create a patch. People start buying the patch to put on their jersey. And it's just uh, an opportunity missed. And I think it goes to show that as powerful as the IIHF wants to make themselves seem in the hockey world, they are a very small player when it comes to comparing them to the NHL. I don't know if you see it the same way, Sean. 100%. You know, they're not FIFA. They're not even FIBA, like the the international basketball uh, governing body. The IIHF, at least in recent years, has proven that they um, are third rate. DC, thoughts on how um, an NHL, the, the NHL puts on their outdoor games versus what the IA, IIHF gave us on Friday? Uh, again, the NHL puts a lot of effort. They do a lot of uh, teasers for the logos. They get a lot of press. They're announcing it months in advance. This one, almost no fanfare. Um, and I, I do have to agree with Sean. It kind of makes it look like it's sort of a you know, third-rate organization. Like they're looking at FIBA. They're looking at FIFA. They're seeing what Big Brother's doing, and they're trying to emulate it, but they just really don't have the pull that they need to pull it off. And I still, I think they could have, I think they could have, and they, they didn't. And I just think that goes to show where they are as an organization. Well, that, uh, that wraps up the outdoor game portion of the podcast. Uh, just generally, especially from a team Canada fan standpoint, a disappointment of a game, but it was still, <laughs> <laughs> still neat to see, uh, team USA has actually won six games in a row. As far as uh, junior competition goes against Canada. So we'll see uh, by the t- this time next week, we should have a winner of that tournament. And that may come up on the podcast. We'll be right back. Voting is your American right and responsibility. Wait, you're Canadian? Voting is your Canadian right and responsibility. Either way, vote for the concept of the week here at HJC. Every week, there's a new vote on the right-hand side of the page in a black box. Just click the concept you wish to vote for, and boom, you're all done. Results posted every Saturday at 4.30 with Ryan's weekly recap here at HJC. It's now time to go around the league. This is the part of the show where we tell you about our favorite teams and how they did over the past week. And of course, the team that you all want to hear about every week, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, And since we last spoke, they played a Saturday game against the New York Rangers and they pulled through with a 3-2 win. TC will cover that more in depth when it's his turn. Uh, And then there's the Christmas break, so uh, not much was happening this week. But they did come back from the Christmas break on Thursday and defeated the Arizona Coyote, Coyotes 7-4, to four, which is great that they scored seven goals against the Coyotes. Not so great that they let in four because uh, you need a stronger defensive effort against a team as weak as Arizona. And uh, as of this recording, they played the Colorado Avalanche, but I don't have the score in front of me, so I have no clue how they did. Hopefully they won. Overtime loss. Overtime loss, was it? Yep. All right, well, they got a point. So they've had points in four of their last five games, I believe. That's pretty good. They're rolling along. It seems uh, everything's coming together nicely right now. Sean, what's going on with the uh, what is going on with the Jets? Injury bug. Injury. Well, we lost uh, a, a little known player, uh, Mark Shifley, for six to eight weeks. <laughs> uh, you know, but the, the Manitoba Moose are top of the AHL right now. So I mean, let's give the young guys a little chance to get some NHL experience. Uh, last podcast, I didn't get to talk about a few nice wins, including a 6-4 win over Nashville, uh, a shootout loss to the surging Boston Bruins, and then last uh, last Saturday, 
they would lose 5-2 to Phil's Islanders this week, a 4-3 win over the Uprising Oilers. And just last night, 4-2 win over the Islanders, which means that our last game of the year, tomorrow, Sunday, at Edmonton to close it out. Sitting now pretty with 22 wins, 11 losses, and 6 OT, leading the Central Division as of recording this. Which is surprising. I had them barely either making or missing the playoffs, but good good on them. It's, it'll be good to see Winnipeg in the playoffs and that building uh, be quite loud. That'll be quite exciting. TC, what happened with the Rangers starting with last Saturday? Uh, last Saturday, the Rangers lost due to some whining by the Maple Leafs. Uh, whining about something or other, about goal not being scored or... I don't know. It's just classic Maple Leafs underhanded tricks. Uh, as for Wednesday, beat the Washington Capitals 1-0, and earlier tonight, tonight being Friday, lost in shootout to Detroit. The biggest news right now is the loss of Chris Kreider. They found a blood clot in his arm, which means he is out indefinitely. That's That's a pretty solid loss for the team. See how they do. The other big news is the Winter Classic coming up on Monday. I know we're all excited to see the Rangers take the ice against Buffalo at City Field, and I think it's going to be a good game uh, because I know the Rangers are going to win because, let's face it, it's Buffalo. Buffalo stinks. That should be guaranteed win night. <laughs> the only thing good about Buffalo that night will be their jerseys. True. Is it a night game or day game? I haven't checked. It's day game, 1 p.m. Okay. All right. Unless, of course, there's bad weather, and then they always end up moving it back, and you keep getting updates hourly on that they keep moving it back. But that'll that'll be interesting to watch and interesting to see. That was everyone's favorite segment, Around the League. It's now time for Throwback Throwdown. This is where we take two retro jerseys and pit them against each other, and each writer picks a winner, and then we announce the winner. And that winner gets absolutely nothing. It retroactively gets a cry. Gets a medal. They get a medal. <laughs> uh, tonight's contest, because New Jersey is in Washington tonight, they'll be going head to head. We got New Jersey's retro red and green Christmas sweaters going up against Washington's blue jerseys from the 90s with their Eagle logo. Uh Sean, why don't you start us off? Give us a quick review of the New Jersey Devils jersey. The Mickey Mouse jerseys, as they were once referred to by a certain great one. Uh, these are a very interesting jersey, as the Devils made it so their home and away had the same striping, but you couldn't see that top white stripe on the red jersey. It's a classic 80s look. You got the thick yoke stripe. You got lots of striping going on. Very colorful jersey. The full kit itself with the bright green pants. It's a wonderful look. You never want the Devils to wear full time, but you're nice to see it once uh, or twice a year. TC, New Jersey? Uh, I like these. Um, Contrary to what Sean said, it's not the same striping. They swap the thickness of the two uh, red and green stripes versus the home and away. Um, but I, I like the green yoke. I liked, uh, it's an interesting color scheme that we don't really see enough of and I kind of miss it. But like Sean said, it's something that I think is good for, uh, an occasional wear and not full time. Yeah, I agree. It was a great set in the eighties, fit the eighties well, and they were due for a change when they changed it in 92. And I enjoy seeing the retro Jersey come back once around St. Patrick's Day or whenever they do it. Once a year, that's cool. Uh, Solid jersey for the 80s, like I said. I love the red and green. The logo looks fantastic in those colors. I much prefer it in those colors to the uh, black and red. But uh, really solid jersey, again, for the time frame. Its opponent tonight is Washington Capitals blue jersey from the 90s. And they completed this switch in 94-95, I think it was. Sean, why don't you uh, give us your feedback on Washington's blue jersey? It's one of my all-time favorite jerseys of uh, all time. I love this jersey. I love everything about it. I love the color. I love the script and the striping. Uh, I think it was a wonderful update for the Capitals. It sucks they dropped it in 2000. uh, And it has their one cup final to go with it. TC? 
Uh, I love this jersey um, just because it's the Capitals' identity I grew up with. I love the Screeching Eagle. Uh, it's up there with the Weagle as the best logos that the Caps ever had. The actual text in the hem stripe is interesting, but I think for the 90s they could get away with it. I love the fact that they had their own shade of Columbia blue. Uh, my only real gripe with this jersey is the font. I never liked the font that they used. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you on the uh, color of the jersey. They owned it. That was theirs. It was it was fantastic. But I was not a fan of this changeover. Uh, the biggest downfall to me was the text in the in the hem stripe. Did not like that at all. Uh, the numbering on the back was terrible. Uh, but I was didn't like the switch either when they went with the black alternate and dropped the blue jersey. So if I had to pick a winner here for me personally, it would be New Jersey's red jersey. How about you, Sean? I like both of them. I love. I'd love to see them back once or twice a year. But my vote goes to the Washington Columbia Blue. And TC break the tie. Who do you got? This is a tough one for me because both of these jerseys I do like, but I think for both of them. I prefer the light jersey of these sets, but for the sake of my childhood, I have to go with the Capitals. And the Washington Capitals win this week's throwback throwdown. That blue jersey from the 90s defeats New Jersey's retro red and green jerseys from the 80s. And maybe that's because we have two 90s kids here. Yeah, don't hassle me, old man. <laughs> But Washington is our winner here on this edition of Throwback Throwdown. And after Throwback Throwdown, we move to fake or authentic. This is where I give four statements and we answer them either fake or authentic. And let's get right to the first statement. The first statement is, I'd like to see more outdoor games from the IIHF. Go ahead, Sean. I'm going to say fake, but it's because they're going to run out of teams. <laughs> I feel like it's only so many times we can see Canada, U.S., Finland, Sweden, Russia, Canada, U.S., Canada, until we have Kazakhstan, you know, Canada, Belarus, Sweden, Russia, Latvia. Well, you could do a Kazakhstan versus Russia match up outdoors in Kazakhstan, couldn't you? I don't know, actually. I feel like that's to be a neat idea, but, uh, you know, I don't want to be the one to have to put money forward on that. Let me put it that way. Going back Can again. players wear flak jackets during the game? <laughs> <laughs> Going back again to what they did on Friday, I don't understand why the earlier afternoon game wasn't outdoors as well. Now, get, granted, the stadium would have been empty, but... Why not offer people the chance for the package deal? You know, come for two games. Of course, you probably would be frozen. So I probably don't know what I'm talking about there. But anyways, TC, fake or authentic, you'd like to see more IIHF outdoor games. I'm going to say fake for a different reason than Sean. I'm going to say fake because I don't think they know how to do it properly. Um, I think that this event proved that they really don't have what it takes to pull it off like the NHL pulls it off, not just in execution, but leading up to it. They just didn't promote it well. And I'm going to go with authentic on this statement for the another reason. I'm optimistic that they can learn and pull off uh, a good outdoor game with logos and a good-looking stadium. It, it, there's a precedent set that they can learn from. So hopefully there's more to come in the future. Second statement, I'd purchase a game-worn jersey with a player that I kind of like before purchasing an Adidas authentic jersey with the player that I like best. Sean, fake or authentic? Authentic, and this goes back to if anybody has ever been a migraine, you see a player that you know the name of. He's not too obs – Alexei Ponikarovsky is probably the best example I can think of. Would I rather a Ponikarovsky game-worn 0304 Leafs jersey – or, you know, the, the, you know, you said Adidas authentic, but I'll say CCM authentic for the sake of it. I, I, I'd put them in the same category, those two. Would I want an authentic jersey with Gary Roberts or a game-worn Ponikarowski? I'd pick Ponikarowski any day, and the same thing applies here. 
I think the exception being is that, you know, it has to be a specific player. Like, I, I think you have a couple Keith Ollie jerseys. I have a Keith Ollie jersey and a Joe Colborn jersey, both guys who are no longer in the NHL, uh, but both first-round picks, I think. I wouldn't be as brave as you with picking those. Uh, you know, maybe Alexander Suglobov. You know, that'd probably be my line. Suglobov. And non-Leaf fans right now are thinking, what the hell are you guys talking about? Hashtag T- Toronto Maple Leafs problems. <laughs> TC, what would you do? Uh, Game worn jersey with the player that you kind of like, or Adidas authentic with the player that you like the most? Uh, can we add? Uh, are are we? Is this which would we rather have, or which would we rather buy? Because I'm a broke college student, so I'm gonna go with whichever is the lowest price point. But if we're going like overall, would I rather have a game worn for someone I kind of like, or my favorite player authentic? I'd have to go with a game worn. Yeah, I would have to agree with you. I'd, I'd go with the game worn as well. Uh, there is a difference for anyone who has not touched a game worn jersey. There is a big difference. And once you got your hands on one, especially Adidas, you will see that the authentics that Adidas is offering and the authentics that Reebok offered are not the same at all as to what the players wear on the ice. So. Uh, yeah, I'd have to take the game worn jersey. Uh, a ten out of ten times, I'd take the game worn jersey. Our third statement. This one's about concepts that uh, come into the blog hockeyjerseyconcepts.com. Concepts on HJC receive extra points solely because they are placed on a great template. Sean. Fake, one hundred percent, and I've made an effort to do so. Uh, dating back to when I started on the blog, and we had a flood of two thousand nine to eleven. Uh, Blackhawks alternate sort of tweaks, uh, and those would always get high ratings. And I never liked them, and, and you get a seven and a five point five out of me. No, no. If you lay a concept out well, if you display everything nicely, no matter what the template is, you'll get points from me. But if you slap, you know, and I've seen this before. If you put the Leafs oh uh, seven to ten away jersey on a nice template, send it in as a concept, I'm still going to give you a five out of ten, even if the idea is nice. TC fake right? The template. <laughs> Fake or I'm going to say fake from the writer's standpoint. Um, I think we've done, Sean uh, is another one like me. We we go more for the actual design behind the concept than the presentation. Um, and granted, I do, if it's a good design and it's on a flashy template, all the better. But if it's an old fake design, old um weak design that we've seen a hundred times before on a new template, I'm not going to give you the bonus points for it. That being said, I think in some of the contests where our uh, readers get to vote on it, I think they do get bonus points from the readers who just say, Ooh, shiny. I agree. And I think there are some writers uh, in the past that have been fooled by a good looking template. Like, um, sorry to pick on Anthony C, but there was a concept about a month ago and it was pretty much exact. It was minor, minor tweaks to the NHL 100 classic jerseys. And it was even posted on aesthetics as well. But to me, that's not enough of a concept to gain any kind of quality marks. So, but it was placed on the, uh, you know, the lifelike template that you can pay money for. And, uh, People just seem to enjoy it more than they probably should have. And that's just my opinion. But that's what makes Hockey Jersey Concepts great. It's full of opinions. Yeah, I think the best example of that is how many. And please, if you're listening to this, do not do this. Do something new with Calgary's vintage jersey if you're making a Calgary concept. Uh, That's probably the best example I can think of here is... You know, we've gotten 10 or 20, like, especially during, the, you know, in the past, we had at least 20 or 30 a year Reebok versions of the 80s and uh, early 90s Flames jerseys. Uh, ditto for teams like the Whalers. Like, we've seen these. Don't be afraid to do something new. Agreed, 100%. The last statement for Faker Authentic. I've never been less excited for the Olympic Games than I am for the 2018 Games. Sean, fake or authentic? Fake, because uh, I was 10 when the Torino Games were going on. 
Uh, and that is the lowest I've ever had for Olympic uh, excitement, despite how nice it was that all those Swedish guys got to win. Canada had ugly-ass jerseys. They played ugly-ass. And it was just the games where, you know, I think it was at the point where I actually felt like, this isn't to insult the sport, but I was watching women's hockey, Canada versus Italy, and getting more excitement out of that than I was out of the men's team finishing like seventh. TZ, fake or authentic on this one? I'm going to have to go authentic, if only from an aesthetic standpoint. Past, I've always enjoyed uh, looking forward to see what uniforms the teams have. But seeing the uniforms that Nike has come out with, everybody on that garbage template, I'm just not... Like my heart isn't in it. I I'm not looking forward to having to watch the games with those running around on the ice. Yeah, I'm going to be authentic on this one too. I'm I'm not interested in the jerseys. They suck. Uh, the players are outcast NHLers, and I just know that someone's going to have a great tournament, and someone in the NHL is going to think that they found a diamond in the rough, and they're going to sign them to a contract next season. And they're just going to flub out again because there's a reason they're not in the NHL. And on top of that, the games are going to be in the middle of the night when I feel like sleeping rather than watching some ex-NHLers try and play some serious hockey that I don't care about. So, Isn't that what the Spengler Cup's for? I'm more interested in the Spengler Cup this year. I know it's the, the it's same a, it's players. It's enjoyable. The Spengler Cup is very enjoyable. Those Those guys are out there trying to trying to win it for their respective teams. And I love that all these teams, these teams from different leagues come together uh, to play this one quick tournament. And I think that's really exciting and that they include team Canada in there every year is kind of cool, but uh, I'm, I'm authentic. I'm not looking forward to these Olympics because hockey's the big sport for me and other sports like bobsleigh and figure skating and skiing. I just don't care enough about to stay up for. So, not don't looking. forget curling, eh? Well, the curlers, oh. yep, yep. It's not the Scotties who cares. The Scott Tournament of Hearts goes too late, so we couldn't uh, couldn't send our top curlers from the Scott's Tournament of Hearts out to the Olympics, so we had to do the Roar of the Rings. So the uh, team captains, their respective <laughs> rinks, would be going to the Olympics this year. Don't you dare insult the Scotty Tournament of Hearts. Scott uh, Tournament that's of Hearts. tradition of the Maritimes, getting excited for it and doing incredibly poorly. <laughs> if there was a hockey equivalent... We'd be doing the damn same. <laughs> I always used to get pissed off at the Scots Tournament of Hearts because it's on TSN. And you know what else used to be on TSN back in the day? Wrestling. And wrestling fans got their wrestling preempted for curling. And I'm bitter <laughs> about it to this day, even though I'm not a wrestling fan anymore. And maybe I'd be more inclined to watch curling instead of wrestling now. Still bitter. Screw you, Scots Tournament of Hearts. <laughs> it's now time. For the HJC mailbag. 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 We're digging into the HJC mailbag. If you want to leave a question for us to answer here on the podcast, go to HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. There's a form on the side of the page where you can leave a question. And be sure to leave your name so that we can give you credit for your great question on the podcast. Uh, This one comes in from Alan. Which nation that will play in the Winter Olympics will make their new horrible jerseys their main set? Sean, do you think anyone from the Olympics is going to make these jerseys their main set? I hope Norway does. That'd be nice. Kick ass with the Viking vote. You got the script thing going on, which which is not, you know, a new thing for them. Uh, Norway is the only team I can think, and I think that's the best jerseys they've ever worn, which may say something to what Norway usually wears. But you know what? They're passable. I do like the Viking ship on the Norway jerseys. TC, do you see any of these nations making these jerseys their regular IIHF tournament jerseys? Um, I think Slovenia. I think they're just happy to be here, and they're just going to go crazy. Just, hey, hey, remember that time we were in the Olympics? We were wearing these jerseys. <laughs> we and have one player. Yeah, they're there because... Yeah. Andre Kopitar got them there, and that's why they're there. Uh, I'd have to say the same thing about uh, South Korea. They're probably going to love these games. They're their games, 
and they're going to be there and they're probably on board with these jerseys. So if they continue to, to uh, develop their hockey program, I wouldn't be surprised if they choose the, these jerseys going forward. Um, we got a, another question left a while ago from Burka Circus. What's your favorite jersey of all time from your team's arch rival? And leaves an example, my favorite Habs jersey. So, uh, Sean, your favorite jersey from your team's arch rival? I'm going to do a thing where the Jets don't have a rival at this point. Uh, they still have to earn one. So let's go with the Leafs. And who are the Leafs' rivals? Well, growing up, the Habs were terrible. So I hate the Sens. Still do hate everything about them. However, they're, I believe it's 95 to 99, the black jerseys with the white in the arms. Those are the only Sens jerseys I will ever own. Really like these jerseys. Uh, they, some decent players wore them. Alex Daggle wore them, which is funny, but, um, yeah, you know, and if I had to pick for the halves, it's the 09 or the 1909, 1910, the Christmas leaf Jersey. TC, if you had to own a Jersey from your arch rival, and I think you do, which one would it be? Well, I think. The other guys on the podcast can already tell what mine is going to be because Burka Circus, this question actually arrived perfectly. I am a Rangers fan, but I'm currently wearing the Islanders Fisherman jersey. It's one of my most prized jerseys in my collection. I love it. I think it's a great look for the time. Uh, I know it's a very controversial jersey, but I think for the era it was in, it was pretty spectacular. And it's just so bad that it's good. So I would and I do own a fisherman. And as far as I go, I'm, I'm a, obviously a Leafs fan. I will never, ever, ever, ever own a Habs or Senators jersey. But if I absolutely had to choose one for the sake of this question, um, you know, it would probably be a 1950s. I want an exact replica of a 1950s Montreal Canadiens jersey. With the numbers done in that in that style and the white collar and the collar laces, uh, if I had to choose one, that's what it would be. And if I was just dirty, dirty rich, I would try and find a game-worn jersey from the 1950s. But I'm not, so I will never. It's got to be dust by now. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. I'd have to get a, a case, an airproof case with security codes and... LED lights and other ridiculous things. Those fancy things. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not filthy rich, so I'll never afford LED lights. All right. This question comes in from Sean, left pre-Christmas. Sean, our own Sean, Jets96. And uh, it's got lots of words in it, so I'm going to shorten up your question a little bit. Would you like that CCM release vintage jerseys for the Maroons or Americans or the Pittsburgh Pirates or Quakers, something pre-original six? Um, TC, why don't you answer this one first? Uh, I, I would. I think that'd be a really cool way to celebrate the history of the NHL. Um, if they did do it, I would prefer that they went for kind of like what they've already done with some teams that are a little older. Uh, release it as an actual sweater instead of trying to do a more modern jersey in that style. I think if they went with better, they could pull it off and it would actually look pretty good. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Now, Sean, this is your question. Uh, what would you like to see? I, I the, the question I asked extended to whether or not I wanted them to be like the original CCM heritage, not vintage heritage sweaters where it was a maroons sweater where everything was felt which i'd love to see back don't get me wrong but it, the 2002 saint patrick's uh throwback that the leafs wore something similar to that where it's a modern jersey with that on it. and i want to see both not sort of like a two-tiered thing but i but i want to see a maroons jersey that feels like a 2002 ccm jersey with their logo on it, everything done up nicely and i'm sure adidas could do it in fact nicer than that but i want to see these old style vintage jerseys printed in such a way that you don't have to shell out you know 300 400 for you know 10 pounds of wool 
I'd like to see it in the CCM cut only if it uh, was worn in, in pregame warmups or something like that. If the, if the team, if a team actually acknowledged its use and used it itself for a game or a warm up or something like that, that's when I want to see it in the CCM cut. Otherwise, uh, I want to see those teams in the uh, the wool heritage cut. I think those jer- those jerseys are awesome, and it really adds something to the old old jerseys when they're in that wool cut. Um, that pretty much does it for us here. The mailbag has been answered. We've done throwback throwdown. We've talked about the outdoor game. We've talked about Christmas gifts. There's literally nothing left to talk about. Sean TC, thanks for joining me this week. Always a pleasure to be very welcome. Uh, coming up, we have the starting now. We have the 2017 concept of the year logo competition. That's begun and entries are due on January 12th, noon Eastern. We also have Jersey Casual shirts for sale, HJC logo stickers for sale. Go to HockeyJerseyConcepts.com, and under the shop link, you will find places you can buy those items. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you'll be notified as soon as these podcasts go up there. And if you enjoyed the podcast, give us a thumbs up on YouTube. It helps spread the word about the podcast. And also be sure to tell your friends and get them to tell their friends, and so on. And so on and so on. We could use some comments. We'd love to hear some feedback. Do that on HockeyJerseyConcepts.com or on YouTube. And that's all we have for you today. Thanks for joining us. And take off, eh?